Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's Karsten Forster with Tree 133. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about wildlife habitat in the context of the urban forest. Um, so there's a few ways that our, us arborists can go about this, and maybe the, the prime way is leaving large sections of deadwood, be it in the form of habitat snags here, or large sections of deadwood and trees that have no effect on any safety or property damage. So we're here at a client's property. Craig made this snag about three or four years ago, and you can see just the level of activity it's already had. Plenty of pileated woodpecker activity that's been going on. They're really chunking away at it, forming those cavities. So it's pretty sweet. This is in a perfect location. You know, it's, it's nowhere near any structure of any pedestrian traffic or road traffic. So it can sit, do its thing and just decompose. Really. That's all we can ask. So one of the ways we can add features to these snags to promote uh, more wildlife activity is we can do what's called coronet cut here and it, uh, it involves kind of mimicking a natural fracture of the trunk um, by a series of chainsaw cuts and it's mostly for the human eye but it does accelerate some of the decomposition of this top section here and become more available for wildlife to use. My favorite way of adding value to the snag and adding you know more habitat is cutting a bird box here and it's just like the name implies it's making a an artificial cavity for the bird for those secondary cavity dwelling species to already make use of you know we don't have to go through the timeline of this de decomposing woodpeckers go at it start making cavities and then the secondary cavity dwellers move in we kind of fast forward to that and you can enjoy seeing your snag being used um, much faster by the wildlife in your area. So to form the bird box, we start with two cuts up and down and connect it with one through to form this panel here. So we, we put this back in place and start forming the entry hole to the cavity. And this also marks the center of what's to be our cavity. From there, I make a series of cuts in a grid fashion, depending on what size we're trying to achieve. And from there, I'm able to mill out and just chunk out pieces with the pry bar. This creates a nice open cavity. They can fill it with their nesting material and make it their own. To uh, secure this panel here, what we do is we go with kind of a natural approach. So I just use sticks. They're everywhere. They're probably part of the removal process. So there's plenty of them. I just wedge it in there. I mean, it, it's in there pretty firm, not really going anywhere. And then there's your bird box. So not every tree to be removed is a good wildlife snag candidate. We need this to be able to decompose naturally and also be removed entirely if deemed unstable. I hope this broadened your understanding of wildlife habitat creation in the urban forest. Snags are a great way of doing that. They can add a lot of value e ecologically to your landscape and community. And it's a really great way of seeing something work in its natural form. If you have any questions about habitat snags, uh, please feel free to contact us.